hello guys uh, welcome back to my channel based on african motives still working on engineering science and form in this platform we shall have a continuation working on statics uh, revising past exam papers here we are having the question paper which is from february uh, 2022 exams so we are going to focus on the questions that we are given uh, i think the first part we have got a beam which is uh, and, and the other part that is uh, everything to have a uh, 18 marks there so as you can see that's the total so we shall just focus on everything so that we'll be able to uh, understand what is actually going on all right so i'm not going to waste much of your time let us quickly rush through the questions uh, we are given that on fig one below it shows a beam which is in balance that is it is a balanced what a balanced beam all right so using the information given in fig one calculate the following all right so here we are just calculating guys uh the first part which in 5.11 is to calculate the reaction forces a and c that is uh we are referring to this port at a that is the support here and also the support here at what at c so what are the reaction forces there okay so uh what is very very important for us to have this reaction uh take note of what of the distributed load that we are given here from a to b which is of these three meters also from b to c which is these three meters so it is going to be like uh, you just have to give something like this in between okay also here in between so that's what you're going to have and uh, just multiply 15 by 3 and uh, that is uh, something like 45 and then you also multiply 55 times 3 so what I'm simply saying is something like this guys uh, so that it can be clear this is what we had here in between uh, A and B so it's a distributed lot so you're just going to multiply uh, 55 kilonewton per meter this one times what times 3 which is 165 uh, then 45 times 3 which is 45 okay then separated between 1,5 because it was for these three meters so now you divide by 2 that's 1,5 1,5 the same here divide by 2 1,5 1,5 then the rest here it's just fine so this is just supposed to be your imagination this is what you're supposed to imagine having or working with so that it can be easier for us okay so now let us have our moments since um we want to have the first one at A, so um, let us just start by taking moments about A. All right. Um, so taking moments about A, what are we going to have? All right. So cross-checking on our diagram about A, if you have to cross C, is moving this direction to A, which is an anti-clockwise. So you shall refer to the anti-clockwise moments, the sum of it being equal to the sum of the clockwise moments all right so now i'm going to use this simpler diagram that i had here so if we are to cross check c going to a that is the direction here and clockwise so that is a distance of three plus three which is six meters so it's c times six that's six c all right do we still have anything going to this point a remember you are referring to a which is in the anti-clockwise as you can see we do not have anything all these they are moving this way clockwise that is clockwise that is clockwise okay so we shall move on to the clockwise back to a so now you are taking that distributed load as a concentrated load of what of 165 kilonewton times this distance back to what back to a so it's 165 times 1,5 okay so it's going to be 165 times 1,5 then we move on to this one of 45 now this is 3 here from this point a to b is 3 so 3 plus 1,5 which is going to be 4,5 so it's 45 times 4,5 45 times 4,5 like this let's move on to the last one which is the point lot that we are having of 120 and the distance in between here is just 3 plus 3 which is 6 then plus this 1,5 which is 7,5 so that's 120 times 120 times 7,5 so that is what you're going to have as your 
clockwise moments so combining everything here uh, we are going to obtain something like 1350 if we are to simplify properly these values guys okay so now it can be easier for us to calculate uh, the value of c by simply dividing both sides by six and this can give us something like 220 five okay so this will kilonewton so it's going to be kilonewton so that will be uh, the reaction of the support c which is 225 kilonewton that's uh, what we just have there all right now uh, we are going to move on to c taking moments about c let's see what we have got there all right so taking moments about c So this is what we are going to have this time. If we are to cross check now about C, this A going to C is now clockwise. A is going in a clockwise. So the clockwise is the sum of them we should be equal to the anti-clockwise moments this time. So A going back to the point C. As you can see, the distance is still the same, which is the six meters now times what times A. So it's going to be six A. So what you do is that you're still cross-checking on the movement of the clockwise. Remember, this is your clockwise, this direction. This is clockwise like this. That's how a clock moves. So this part is moving this way, which is anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. But if you are to cross-check, this 120 is moving this way, which is clockwise. So we still have another part there, which is what? 120 versus a distance of 1,5 in between so it's 120 times 1,5 so that's what you're going to have then the rest these ones we said they are moving in this way going back to the point c we are moving in the anti-clockwise that is what we have here the first one and also the second one because we are referring to c now so this is the movement which is anti-clockwise all right so it's 45 times this distance of 1,5 what 5 and 1,5 that is the distance that you're given in between okay 45 times 1,5 we still have another one because we are referring to this point at C so we still have this 165 back to C here so this is 3 meters okay from this point B to C is 3 meters then we've got this 1,5 because we need this point not the whole of the okay so it's three plus this distance of 1,5 which is going to give you 4,5 so it's 165 times 4,5 like that all right so this is going to be 6a plus if we combine properly it's going to be 180 that is combined other side everything that's 810 all right so to obtain the value of a now we're just going to uh, transpose 180 to the other side of the equation and that will be negative 180 so if you subtract that will be 630 divide by 6 by 6 both sides then we can be able to find the value of a in kilonewton uh, remember we are given other forces here in what in kilonewton so that means also this is supports are supposed to be in kilonewton so that's what we are having guys uh, for the value of a we obtained 105 kilonewton here for the value of b uh, the value of c we obtained 225 kilonewton that's what we had so question was just calculate the the reactions there then we move on to 5.12 which is now to calculate the bending moments at b and C, the bending moment at this point B here. All right. So what actually are we having at that point B? It's, 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 a, it's a straight point that we are having. So it's going to be easier if we work it from this part here like this. This is our point B here. So remember, we have got A, which is positive going back to B, which is the force times the distance here. And also we have got this now that is acting as a concentrated lot of 165, which is a negative. So it's going downwards. It's a negative. This one is going upwards. It's a positive. So we are saying that uh, this is 5.0 5.12. 
So we are saying the bending moment at uh, B. So I'm going to take uh, this uh, from what? From the left side. Okay, I'm going to take from the left side. So it's a positive 105 times the distance back to B. Force times the distance, which is 105 times 3. 105 times 3. Okay. Now cross-checking from the other side here, it's a negative 165. And the distance between this now acting as our concentrated load back to B is 1,5. Remember? It was distributed between these three meters, so it's now 1,5. But now a, a negative. Take note when calculating bending moments, consider the what, the sign that it's going downwards, so it takes a negative. 1,65 times the distance, which is the distance back to the point, because you're referring to b, which is 1,5. So that's what you're going to have at the end. So combining this. Is going to be 67,5. Uh, that's what you're going to have. This way, kilonewton uh, meter. So actually, I took this from what from the left side. All right. Then what about at C? Because we also need the bending moment at C. So just cross-checking at the point C, guys. It's going to be easier for us to just work with this because here we just have this uh, part that is on the right side. We can just work with 120 which is easier for us. All right. So working with the, uh, see, we are going to have um, this bending moment. Let's see. So the first thing is uh, 120 is going downwards. It's a negative and the distance in between is what? 1,5. So that's what you're going to have. Negative 120 times 1,5. So it's easier for us to take from this side, okay? From this side here. So, which is going to give us negative 180. All right, kilonewton meter. That is uh, our bending moment. At what? Uh, so in this case, the question was just for you to calculate, not uh, to draw anything at the end, but just to just to calculate. So these are some of the typical questions actually that you might find uh, in your question papers or for the exams that you might sit in uh, any time they might be like this and uh, what is important is for you to actually uh, follow the procedures for calculating these bending moments and so forth on 5.2 we are now given uh, fig 2 below shows a lamina using the information given in fig 2 calculate the centroid of the lamina so here we are calculating the centroid which means we're actually working with what with area so remember i actually explain uh, this part uh, if you uh, cross check so uh, maybe i can just do this in an easier way because here i've got two shapes actually that we can uh, have at the end i don't know if it is going to be clear if i am to do this because here is a certain uh, distance 750 just continue with the 750 downwards okay so that we can have a certain distance in between here so that we can actually uh, separate this okay so that's something like this okay that's that's what we have there so looking into you're going to see that here we are having a rectangle here okay let's just say it's a and b so this is actually a rectangle that we are having and here's a it's a semicircle here a half of a circle that's a rectangle a rectangle And here we are having what a semicircle here, which is what which is a half circle. That's a semicircle. So these are the two shapes, and this they are just combined together. Okay, you just combine together. This it's not like this one. It's in between another one. No, like uh, something like of this nature, where maybe you can have a rectangle. Then you have a hole, which is a circle inside. On this type of a condition, whatever that you get, you're supposed to to subtract. Okay, uh, the bigger minus the smaller one. But in this case, you are just to add because they are just connected together. These two, it's like this a rectangle. Then you just put a semicircle on top. That can be another condition. So you just add together. Okay. So what are we actually having? Uh, we are going to have a presentation which is uh, remember for us to calculate the centroid of the laminum 
it's the value of y which is equivalent to the area moment over the area so it's actually calculating the total uh, area moment which i'm just going to refer as ac over the total area okay so this is what you're going to do i'm just going to bring this into consideration okay something of this nature we have got two shapes here we say the rectangle and the semicircle so you're going to have the area the centroid and as you saw the area i'm just referring as a okay let me just remove this one so that it cannot disturb this okay so these are the two that we are having so let us try and find a rectangle guys remember area of a rectangle is direct area of a rectangle that's a length times breadth or length times what length times width that is our length times breadth some can refer to this as length times what length times width just some one and the same thing so which is the length that we are having and the width so the length 750 and the width here which is what which is 500 and these are millimeters okay so i'm just going to write even aside here 750 75 times 50 all right so we are going to obtain 3750 in this case 3750 uh that's square millimeter so this area is actually in what in square units that is square millimeters and uh, this is just millimeters your centroid okay so what is going to be the centroid which is the actually value of what of y so remember uh this one is not going to affect much if you are working with a length if you are working with the x it's supposed to be length over two uh, breadth over two so here we are working with the value of y so y is going to be the breadth over two the breadth is what is the width of the rectangle this one that is the breadth this is the length the longer side okay so you're taking this height this okay 50 millimeters so that's 50 millimeters divided by two which is 25 uh, millimeters so that is your your centroid if you are working with a, a a rectangle okay so now the ac that is your area moment in this case this one it's your area moment which is simply multiplying area times the centroid already you are given so let's just put this as area one uh the centroid one so that it can be easier for us than area moment one so we are just going to uh, uh, multiply area one times the centroid one so in this case we have got 3750 okay that's something like 3750 times uh, 25 okay so that's your area here your area this is your center rate. so if you multiply together these two uh we are obtaining something like so i want you to multiply guys properly something like 793750 okay remember you're multiplying square meters to millimeter i mean square millimeters to millimeters so it's going to be cubic uh, millimeters like that okay so that's what we had for this uh, for the rectangle what about the semicircle okay this is our semicircle now so remember area of a semicircle uh, we can take it from the area of a circle area of a circle is we know that area of a circle is pi d squared over four like this okay so if it is pi d squared over four which is the area of the whole circle and this is half of a circle so you simply multiply it by what by half okay sorry guys for for that so you're going to multiply that by what by a half so that you now have the area of what of the semicircle so i'm just going to adjust from the area that we know of a rectangle so i'm going to put it as half uh pi d squared like this over four since we have the whole circle here and uh, half of it now that is uh the the semicircle so that is half of what is going to be our um, diameter in this case okay so the diameter you can simply see here this is a diameter from this point to this point which is 50 uh, millimeters so that is your diameter 50 so that's 50 squared everything over over four so that's your area in this case so if you have to 
simplify properly you're going to obtain 981 that's 981 comma 7477 so if you can round off it can be 748 because it's 7704 something like that okay so that is your first area so it's like this second area now or a2 what about the the value of y now which is our centroid in this case which is you can just write even and see so remember this is a, a semicircle so some uh, you have to know the formulas okay remember the value of x is just going to be taken as zero but the value of y is going to be given by the formula 4 pi r 4 pi over 3 r so that is what you're going to have 4 r here over 3 pi so that already us guys let's not vice versa let's not vice versa okay 4 r here over 3 pi so actually what you just need guys is to have the table i think that's the best that i can do to just bring out uh, a table of everything that you that you need uh if you're working with the seven circle everything so that it cannot uh, uh disturb us much further okay so this is four times the radius over three pi three pi take note radius then pi okay so remember you said that's our diameter from this this is our diameter 50 so which means radius is half of it which is 25 uh 25 that is what that is radius so radius is half of the diameter so it's half of 50 which is 25 25 okay so this is going to be 4 times the radius over 3 times pi so you can just uh, put it this way uh, on your calculator we'll just simplify further which is going to give us 10.6032 and so forth so um, we can just put this 10.61 uh, 03 uh, so this 3 is not going to change actually so you can just put it as 10.6003 or three, something like that which is 10.61 okay just put it as 10.61 millimeters then what we need now is to have the area moment remember area moment guys you simply multiply the two like what we did your area times the centroid so your area two times the centroid two which is uh, 981.748 times in this case that's our centroid which is 10 comma 61 all right so if we are to multiply properly here we are going to obtain one zero four one six okay comma three four six which is uh remember we've got uh, square millimeters and millimeters which is cubic millimeters in this case so that is the major or the most important part that you are supposed to to have in this case if you are working with what with the centroid so now the next thing what we need is uh, remember we will need to calculate the centroid and we said this is the area moment over the area okay remember the sum of the area moment over the area so what we need here is to have the sum now of the area moment the sum here of the area so that we can simply substitute into our formula so the sum of area as i said guys uh, these diagrams they are separate uh, so you can simply add the area here okay just add it's not like uh, the other part so which means in this case it's just going to be area one plus area two okay so i want you to do me a favor add these two together area one and area two add them together you are going to obtain something like four seven uh three one comma seven four eight okay that's your total area in this case okay and then do the same add your area moments your area moment one okay now area moment one plus area moment two so i want you to add these two this value here and this value here that's your area moments you are going to obtain something like 10, uh, 4, 1, 6. Okay, this is going to be 4166. 4166 here. 
uh comma three four six just use your calculator properly guys here yeah, it's going to be cubic meters okay that's ten four six four uh one six six then we have got three comma four six like that okay so taking the sum of the area moments and the sum of the areas now this can help us to find our solution which is the sandwiches y which is uh the sum of the area moments we obtain this so you have to take this value as it is that's 10 uh, 4 1 6 6 uh, 3 4 6 all right that is a uh, cubic millimeters actually everything over the total area so this is our total area here which is a uh, 4 7 uh, 3 1 uh, comma 7 4 8 this is area remember area guys in square millimeter so definitely the square millimeter and the cubic millimeter is going to give us millimeters in this case uh, which is i want us to divide properly here as 20 comma uh, 20 comma 0430143477 like that but we just round off to three decimal places so what is important guys uh, is this part here this is the major important part uh, this guy is it's just a matter of substitution or and your calculator but to understand what is happening on this table here you have to take the shapes which are present all the shapes that you can actually see from what from the given figure that you be given the given diagram all the shapes which are there how are they connected is something that is important how are they connected the the, the, the shapes that you have got there how are they connected okay is it one on top like uh this one that we sorry that, one, that we had uh, which is actually a separation of two shapes like they just combine like that so here we just have to add which is different from the other part that I was explaining it can be a triangle it can be a rectangle the circle like this this is inside another shape so there we have to subtract the circle from the rectangle or from the square whatever shape that you be given but in only a condition like this we have to add so summation means to combine the two but how are you combining are you going to subtract or to add is very very important because some of us we just see the summation then we just add everything no sometimes you subtract because of the condition of the diagram that you have okay anyways guys that's what we had on this platform working on uh, statics so if there are still some questions that we still uh, need some uh, help on statics we can actually uh, give the feedback uh, back so that we can work on them uh, so what all we just need is the, to know the question paper that you want us to work on on uh, statics so that we can have so that we can at least uh, expand our understanding in uh, this particular topic which is, seems to be difficult to others but it can be easier as we work on much question papers as we can so anyways guys that's what we had from as an african motives till we meet again